Hey everybody, it's David. It's Sunday morning, and guess where I'm at? It's raining in Antioch, Illinois. And so um, we're here to do a little plein air. Um, I didn't think it was gonna be raining, but this is even better because I wanna do some rainy scenes of a city, of a little town. And so here I am in Antioch, and we are going to try to do a little um, rainy scene of a downtown Antioch. So let me just turn you around. And here's what we're gonna be painting. This is a scene. Um, it's a beautiful little scene right now, and, it, and actually I painted it a little bit out. I'm underneath something right now, but um, I painted it out, or drew it up over, over there, so I just move over a little bit, um, but it's pretty close to what I'm gonna be painting. I just wanna show you how to do a rain scene. You know, and actually a rain scene is fun to do. Um, I actually enjoy rain scenes better than, especially when you're doing a city scene. And so again, um, let me show you the scene. See, look at the wet streets. Look at how the um, reflections um, on, on, the, on the cement are just, on the sidewalk are just amazing. I was hoping for that. And <laughs> actually, when I got here, it wasn't raining. And so I had to move my stuff around a little bit. And it's gonna get kind of loud because the cars are driving through. So you may not hear me a couple of times, but let's get going here. And um, see if I can close in up on this a little bit. And so it will be Antioch, Illinois, is where I'm at. Northern town, northern of, of Chicago. And let's see if I can't get even closer than this. Bring this up a little bit. I think you can see that. And so I drew it up. It took me a while to draw because, you know, city scenes are a little bit more difficult to draw. And it is raining, so, and you may not hear me a couple of times because <laughs> it's a lot of, um, a lot of traffic going down the middle of Main Street here in Antioch. And so how do you do this? How do you paint this scene? Um, a lot of grays. We're doing a lot of grays. We're going to start out with the background lights, like we do everything. I squint my eyes and I see in the distance, you see the trees way in the distance. Very gray, very gray green. And so that's what I'm gonna start out with. And I'm painting on a board today, um, a board with gesso, gesso board. And so I'm just gonna come back here. I'm gonna leave the sky white because it is pretty much a white gray sky. And so I'm gonna go with a little grays, grayish green for the background. And actually a little lavender in there too. I'm just gonna put that in there, going right over my trees. And so I'm going to work the trees in the distance first and right over my trees because everything in front will be lighter or darker, I should say. I wish I could get, let's see if I can make this higher so you can actually see what I'm painting. Hold on one second here. So let me just raise this up a little bit. And raise it up a little bit and you can see kind of what I'm painting back there. See how the background is nice and light. And I, I actually, it's fun doing a rainy scene because, again, um, everything's wet and reflective and it gets rid of my bright greens. And so I'm just going to go in here and get those nice dark greens. And everything as it comes forward gets darker, so that's pretty cool. And then the buildings over here will be darker too. So I work my lights. And again, like I said, the sky is gonna be, the sky is gonna be left, left with a um, white because it's just a white sky, rainy sky. And it's coming down pretty hard. <laughs> so luckily I found a place right underneath where I was actually painting outside of this. But again, you're gonna hear a bunch of cars going by. So it's gonna get pretty loud. And I get in here and get some nice, nice dark. But again, first day of my lights. There's a church way back there that's a little bit. Shoot, I didn't bring paper towel. That's not gonna be good. I have to use my pants, I guess. <laughs> so there's a little bit of light back here. Hopefully this will be light enough or you can actually see things.
And um, let's see, I'm gonna put some of the foliage in right now too, the darker foliage, um, because the background is the only thing. Actually, let's get our um, let's get our street. Our street is a light part, right? So let's just wet this and get our street and our sidewalk done right away. And it's getting quite quite dark here. <laughs> I almost can't see. <laughs> you guys can see it, but it's getting really dark, and I can't quite see my colors. So I'm gonna. Should have brought the flashlight or one of those head things so I can actually see what I'm painting. <laughs> and so I'm doing my lights. I'm doing the reflections in the street right now. And I'm going to get kind of a gray, gray color. And so I'm just bringing this down. Most people wouldn't like to go out in the rain and actually paint like this, but actually this is really cool that I'm not getting wet. And um, you can actually see what all the colors are and the lights and darks, and I really love that. I mean, when I was drawing this, it wasn't as nice as it is now. I mean, I love the wet streets. Love, love, love the wet streets. And then you're going to use a lot of grays, uh, and my greens won't be as colorful. To the, oh, man, it's really dark back there now. The, the sky is getting really dark in the back. I hope it, hope it doesn't get a really dark, bad storm here. So the car is just pulled up too here. This is my car here, right there. So that's okay. And I put it in there because it's nice to have a car in the city because it was empty. But as it, it filled up as we get along here, as I was painting along or drawing along, it filled up a little bit. So here again, I'm gonna get some of the darks. Let this drip. This is a nice wet, rainy street. So let's make it warm. Get them in here. And this board acts a little bit differently because it is a board with gesso, um, gesso ground on it. It's called absorbent ground. And so, again, this is my lights. See, I'm doing my lights first. All the light colors first. And a little bit of darks I'm gonna get around. Make sure right there. And I, I'm not going to be looking at the camera very much to see if you're asking questions. So put them up there if you like, but I can look at them later. But I'm going to have to try to get this one done a little bit quicker than normal. <laughs> I'm not sure if the storm is going to get worse or it's going to get better. Hopefully it'll get better. And so now let's go into our darks. And I'll get some brown. So I use my purple with brown. With purple, I use purple and orange to get a brown, a really nice brown. I don't really have browns on my palette. So I'm just gonna go put these in right now. These are just gonna be the reflections in the street of the trees. And it makes it dark and also the sidewalk itself is kind of brownish gray. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here and try to get all that going. And then that'll make it look also rainy. There's puddles here, which even reflect more and I'll get them in later. I can't get them in all at once. And so... I wish I had paper towel, which I forgot to bring. But we'll see what we can do. So again, these are reflections now. These are reflections from the, my car right here underneath. And um, I can't really wait for things to dry today. <laughs> so um, a lot of this is gonna be soft edged and I may not get it to where I can even do hard edges because it may not dry in time for me to actually do some hard edges. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I just have to make a lot of things um, soft edged and use a lot of paint, almost to where I'm using like a, in a gouache technique. Um, but first here we're gonna, a nice thing about this is I can, um, I can wipe out on the board. I can wipe out areas and get them back to light, really light. The board helps me do that because, because it is board and not paper. It's hard board and I put a coating of um, absorbent ground on it. I'm figuring that this is gonna be a day that when I left it was raining and I thought, you know, this would be easier to paint when I'm working with 
with a board instead of paper. And the paper, once it gets dry, because this doesn't absorb as much either. It doesn't absorb as much, so I'm gonna be putting white on here too. And so, I'm doing this straight right now because, why? Because it's the lightest part. I gotta, I gotta get my light parts done first. And I do, I do like little wash of puddles across it with white or rub out one or the other. And then I think I'm gonna have to move on from the street now, from the sidewalk. And I start getting our, um, this right now is lit up, but I'm gonna make that, that's part of the composition was that the background, everything in the background and the sidewalk are gonna be my light. And this building in the front will be light, but this side I had dark, and even though right now it is kind of light, I'm gonna make this side of the building dark. A little bit darker than it is. Artistic license. The building itself is kind of a yellow. And this is white right here, so I'm just going to make this darker and, and make it darker so that it projects the, the background sky a little bit better. I can make it warm, put a little orange in there, coming down here. Wow, it is really coming down now. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, I think this is enjoyable. I'll leave this building and the front light and I'll put like a little bit of a little bit of the warmth in there. Come down here. This window will be dark later. And so then this greenery here. This greenery I will make a little bit darker nice thing is is when it's raining the greens look really nice and gray so I, I don't have to use any of my gray greens that I don't like <laughs> it's like a nice green greenish gray I'll put that in there too it's gonna take a while to dry boy <laughs> 100% humidity, like rain. <laughs> and so here we got some greens. And this little park here, there's a little sidewalk going back this way. And this big rock with um, um, kind of um, history on there. I'm not sure what the rock is. I'll leave that right there. And holy smokes, <laughs> it's coming down. <laughs> And let me just show you really quickly how much is coming down. Here's, a, here's the sidewalk I'm on. I might as well take that picture because there's a good picture too. I may paint that later. <laughs> or actually I have it now so I can maybe paint that later. So here we go again. All right, so there we got our lights and some of our middle tones. Now we got to get into our big darks, our big darks, because once you get your lights, only thing left is darks. And so the first thing I'm going to do is get the foliage on the trees, and I'm going to probably spatter a little bit for that. Again, it's a lighter gray green, and so I'll do that first. I'm going to tap my tap my brush down. Oh, how much fun is this? <laughs> I was actually going to do boats. Good thing I didn't do boats. I was gonna head up to Lake Michigan, do some boats, but thank God I didn't do that because I'd be in the stuck, stuck in the rain unless there's a pavilion there somewhere. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> Let's see if I can. All right, and so that green is kind of almost too too green so I'm gonna dull it down a little bit with some purple and do the lighter green first always do the lighter green first and then I'm gonna do it on top but everything that comes forward oh it's getting green on here it's getting windy oh no 
No, 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 don't do this on me. <laughs> it's bouncing off the wall, I think, here, so. Yeah, that's okay. It's gonna give a, it's gonna make it look like it's raining in my scene. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and so this tree right here, it's gonna have a lot of foliage on it, too. And so this is the foliage behind the branches, so I'm still keeping my branches. And I'm not wetting the surface first because if I wet the surface first, I'll make it soft edge. And I want hard edges here right now. And so, and again, this is my soft, this is my light, light area. And I'll get darker and darker with the leaves and with the branches as it comes forward. As it comes forward, we get darker and darker. All right, there we go. Now let's get darker. So I'm gonna do my background trees first and I will make them more of a, um, when I look on there, they're, they're a little bit more gray. The brown is a little bit more gray. So I'm gonna start with this tree way back there, way in the distance with the branches. Then get a little bit more darker. And again, I use purple and orange to get my browns. I, I mix my browns with purple and orange. Get more and more dark as I go forward. Now I will not get many of these things to be hard edged. Why? Because everything's wet, <laughs> and um, that's an okay thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually kind of like that. I like to do a, little, a lot with um, with making things soft edge, losing edges. Losing edges is a good thing. Lose those edges. Especially if it's not, this is a center of interest right here. This is my center of interest. And so there, right there, I'm going to keep all my details um, sharp, contrasty, colorful. And as I come forward, and as I come forward, it's going to get darker and darker, my branches, my tree trunks and everything. See, it get a little bit darker. And there's a lot of green in these, uh, there's a lot of moss on these trees, so there's a lot of green in there too. And so I'll just add, mix a little green into that. And I'll put my branches in fully, uh, leaving spaces once in a while for leaves that are in front. So there will be leaves in front of it. Put some moss on it, put a little green in there. And this one in front is really, really dark. Uh, there's another tree right here. And put that tree there. You need to, even though they may seem like all the trees are exactly all the way back, you don't paint them like that because if you paint them like that, then you tend to make it look like it's not dimensional. You don't get that nice fluidness to it. And so make sure you get that nice fluid look to it and make things go back. And as it comes forward, it gets darker. That was part of my composition is that everything as it comes forward gets darker. So now let's go to our big, big tree here, the big tree in front that's gonna be covering a lot of stuff. And I always go with my big, big darks first, trying to get all the big darks working out, worked out. And then you go more and more details, more detailed darks. But right now, let's just get our big, huge area darks. And that should be darker because why? It's in front, right? So nice and dark. A little bit of the, little bit of the, of the moss will be on there too. So. Got that coming in. I had an umbrella, but it wasn't big enough to cover everything. I could still be out in the in the rain, but this is actually an awning over at one of the stores, which actually works out much, much better. Okay, let's get more of these branches done back here, and I can bring it down. Just 
get all the stuff done here. A bunch of branches. There will be darker greeny leaves in front of that, but not until I get this done. Not until I get these branches done. Like I said, I get darker and darker as I come forward. Adding a little bit of green into my brown because of the moss on the trees. And now I'm, a, I'm actually kind of working it almost like gouache because I'm using a pretty thick... Now I'm on a board on a um, water... I'm on a hard board mixed with... Um, or made with... What do you call it? Um, absorbent ground. It's um, absorbent ground that you get. It's a gesso that you can use for watercolor on a, on a board like this. Let me work my background now a little bit, like the background behind my car here. Um, get that kind of gray and just get that done so that this will be in the distance. And it is very gray, kind of warm in a way, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make it more cool than it is. Just to stay, keep it back there. I don't want it to come forward. And also it'll take, show me the top of my car. I'm doing negative painting on that, so that it'll show my top of my car. This building back here is warm of red brick. I will make it red, but I'm not going to make it as red as it is, because otherwise it doesn't sit back. Squint your eye, squint your eye. It's one of those things you learn from Richard Schmid. He had a, he had a thing called that Richard squint, squint, the secret squint. Squint your eyes to see the value. You see the value of what's back there better than when you have your eyes open, wide open. This is like a camera. A camera is really good at making everything in focus and making everything really um, detailed. But I want to see it not as detailed as it is. I want to see how it looks from a distance. I want to show distance and dimension in this work and so to do that, I've got to squint my eyes. And it brings your darks together as one big unit. Like here, right here, on the side here. And this window is dark. Top over here goes a little bit darker. And as things come forward, they get darker and more prominent. Here I'll even put a little reflection into the street. It's so neat that you get all those reflections with the rain. That's what I love so much about painting in the rain. You get all these beautiful reflections. Now here's, here's my car, Murray. Murray's my car's name. And so he's right here getting all wet, but he's a part of the picture. So he's an important part of the picture too, because it stops me from my eye going out. So I put him there, especially to have him keep my eye into the picture. So Murray, Murray is modeling today. And Murray just had, um, almost had to have a new um, muffler put on him. Luckily they didn't have to do that, otherwise it would have been $2,000. I'm like, oh my gosh, for a muffler? These Cadillac converters nowadays, boy, it's like crazy. All right, so that's a dark inside of Murray here. This windshield is reflecting the, the up above. The, it's reflecting the branches from above and the leaves from above. So make them the same color because it is like glass, right? And it's like a mirror. The car itself is black, but it's reflecting, even in the window here, it's reflecting this, this right here. It's reflecting that. So I'm gonna put a little of that color into the window here. So that's what this is. And then at the same time, I'm going to drip it down into the street. Go into the street and make that reflection right into the street. And again, seeing that it's watercolor, this is not going to dry very quickly. <laughs> and so I don't have the option of letting it dry to get some hard edges. Though it is drying um, well enough, though, to get my hard edges. So. It's fine. I'm actually um, getting it hard enough, or I use more paint. If you use more paint, it will, you know, it, it ends up being 
a little bit harder edge and it's more um, gouache like but that's fine you got to do with what you got to do it is raining and so um, there's certain things you can't help let me get this um, these windows in here now I'm gonna make the windows dark even though they're not dark I'm gonna go in here and darken them up a little bit so that you see them Here, the building itself the window is nice and dark so i'm just going to darken it first with the middle there's a, i think it's an antique store so there's a nice window hanging in the window there's, um, so I'm just gonna put that and at the same time negative paint negative paint the front here put some reflections some puddles into the into the street again i am going to have to make this a little bit darker down here in the foreground, but I'm going to wait until I get the background going here. Work little by little, getting things to where they're at. American flag out there in the rain. Got, uh, way back here we got a pole with uh, flowers on it. I must say, when you're out here in the in you know in real life in plain air, the nice thing about it is you learn so much more because you learn about what color things are and um, how great things are. When we're indoors, a lot of times we don't, and we're using our photographs. It's whatever the photograph is, and you don't, can't really see it's whatever the photograph says it is. And a lot of times that's not so accurate. Oh, looks like the car just pulled. Where did the car go? I didn't even notice. A, there was a car in here. <laughs> I did not notice that. Did you guys notice that when it went away? So, oh, there goes another car to replace it. <laughs> that's a little bit bigger a truck, though. But uh, that's, uh, that's okay. We'll put that in there instead. A nice big truck. And there's lights on. We can have to put that in there, too. Yeah, I'll put it in right away. So if he leaves. <laughs> We still have it. Here we have a bunch of detail in the street right here, and that's gonna be cool to put in. So, you know, across the street we have a little bit of this going on. So, and as we as we go across this, morning. So again, I'm gonna scrub my eye, and I noticed that all this tree stuff has to be darker, and even the foliage in there, and everything will have to be a lot darker to get that look of the background being nice and nice and dark, or nice and light. And I am gonna make the side of this building again darker, even though it is not dark; it is light. But I'm gonna take my artistic license and make it darker, just because I need to have this. I'll center in on, on my middle part here. And you can do that. As the artist, you're allowed to do anything you want to make the composition better than what it is. Okay, making it darker makes it makes your look more into the center here. And I will make this part a little bit darker too. My foliage, my greenery here. There's this, there's this trunk there, like a sculptured trunk. I have to go look what that is, what the, what the meaning of that trunk is right there. It's like it's some kind of sculpture that was put there. Maybe it's the first tree of Antioch or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to go look at this sign and see what that is. And I'll put it in. What the heck? It is, you know, part here is like a big trunk there. And then it comes down this way. See what that is later. Uh, that could be, maybe that's the name of the whole painting. Let's scrub this up a little bit. It's got a little bit. Make my foreground a little bit darker again. Make some of the full, make some of the reflections again, and the puddles especially. There's puddles here, and so they'll reflect more in the puddles because there's more water there. 
When it's a sidewalk with no puddle, then it's, uh, it's like matte, and so you won't see any kind of reflection. Here's the big rock with the plaque on it, and I'll have to go again and read that and see what the plaque says. And there's all these little details of a little fence that goes around this stuff, but I don't put that in until later. And I may have to do it when I get back home because um, if it doesn't dry, I can't do detail, detail. So we may have to do that later in my studio when it's dry. <laughs> and now I'm going to put the flag up here. Might as well put the flag in. I'm going to get to detail stage. Little American flag right there, hanging off the pole. Put the blue stars in. There's a little a couple lamps here. And let me get the big foliage in here now. I get the dark, the dark foliage. Let's see. Dark green foliage I gotta get in here now. So I'm gonna tap it here a little bit. down and I'm getting actually lightening up so I think it's gonna stop raining in a second here hopefully it'll get a little bit quieter when the tra when the cars go by boy you don't realize how loud it is when a car drives in a street that's wet <laughs> so here we go with um, the dark that's in front of the branches and in front of the greenery in the back because as it comes, like I said, as it comes forward, it also gets um, darker. The foliage gets darker. I am making it kind of a, a that's an ugly green boy. I gotta get a little bit more gray in it, a little bit more orange in it. Watch your greens. Don't make them look um, unrealistic. It's very important. I've been studying greens this whole last couple months and stuff, and there's a lot of orange and green in nature when I got out here plein air painting. So um, always be aware of that because if you're using colors that don't look like what it is in nature and you wanted to make it look like it is, like everything is, I mean you can make it so it doesn't look like that or you can just make whatever color you want, that's fine. But if you want to make it look exactly like what it is out there, um, there's a lot of orange in the green, a lot of orange, a lot of yellow too, a lot of yellow. So now I'm, I'm darkening things up so that your eye, again, centers in on this area right here. That's my center of interest, so that's where I want to keep it all really harsh and um, get you to look right there. Now these branches are a lot, a lot darker right here, I guess, especially against the sky. And I want them a little bit more detailed right here also because this is my center of interest. And I, have to, I notice now too that the, um, the trunks of the trees are not even dark enough again. They lightened up because I use so much water, and there's so much water in the air that um, I gotta make these a lot darker. And that's okay because then that was my first wash anyway, so I can make the bottom parts a little bit darker. And then give them a little greener. See how they pop forward? They're gonna pop forward because they're a little bit darker. And you can never get enough branches, really. I mean, you can make a thousand, thousand branches and it's still not gonna be enough. Unless you're doing it more as a, you know, impressionistic um, look, then you can just, you know, you don't have to put them all in. And let's put a little bit of these lights in there. Morning. And again, some nice darks, nice darks in here. Dark, dark leaves, dark, dark leaves you want. And a little bit of orange in my green. And I noticed that when a lot of beginners, what they do with tree, they make them so very round. They make them too round. These branches and these are all over the place. They're not so, so perfectly round. Nobody trims the trees up there. And as it comes forward again, see how darker I'm getting? And so it definitely looks like that's farther back, this is farther forward. And uh, i use my small brush and get some tiny branches going in here. 
again look at all those branches up there and you don't see branches on the outer edge you know you just see them on in inside There's a lot of nice branches in there a lot of nice leaves I'm actually doing a lot of plein air painting because I'm getting ready for the plein air fest in Grand Marais and so I'm hoping it a couple of times rains there because I plan on doing a couple of scenes there in Grand Marais that are same thing where they're going to be very um, wet <laughs> and street scenes that are nice and wet. Now I'm going to get Murray here a little bit darker, get him um, all this stuff a little bit darker because it, again once it dries it dries about 20% lighter and so making things a little bit darker and this is again the reflection and that's where you can um you don't have to think of this as detail detail where you're doing every little thing like you know the hubcaps or the you know, people, the wheel don't have hubcaps anymore but <laughs> the wheel itself you know you have to make it so perfect it's it's part of the whole picture you got to think of the whole picture and how can you paint things together what can you bring together like here's the mirror it's nice and dark and that goes to the bottom of the car here how can I bring this all together as one value and still make it look like um, the car that it is and what do, can you leave out what are the details you out to still make it look very big. Here the grill, I'll put a couple of grill marks in there. Big lights and darks. Think about the big lights and darks. And on this, the nice thing is, is I'm going to use like wash later on. I will go in when it's a little bit drier and I will get some, um, I'll take some opaque whites and I will put those in there too. The lamp, here's a lamp. I can't do it very detailed because it's just so dry or so wet that things don't get hard edged. Now this side here, I'm gonna to try to get some more detail now. I'm in my detail stage and almost actually gonna be done with this because I don't be I won't be able to get really fine detail again because of the wetness of everything. And it's, not, it's basically going to take forever to dry. And then I can take it home, finish it up, do all the fine details, and I'll show it on my Facebook page when it's all super finished and done. Uh, we're getting it pretty far. I mean, we'll get it pretty far along. But I just don't think I can get the super fine details in the time with this, with this wetness that's raining. Though it did stop raining hard. It's just drizzling now, so that's okay. Bunch of stuff again, just trying to get some more details. And I know a lot of watercolors don't like using black, but go ahead and use some of the black in your picture. It's um, fine to do black. I know watercolors um, are always told to mix your blacks. I just use plain black and then um, put color into it if I want a more colorful black. There's that little white in there now, and there's some opaque to get the other side of this little trunk of tree. There's dark green over here. The thing around it too. The thing around it on this side. You see how I can't get details even in the window. It just it just keeps on getting soft edge, which is actually kind of neat. You know, it's uh, it's fun to be able to 
get soft edges and looser edges. You know, I'm all about that anyway, so here's doing it for me without me wanting to do <laughs> some of it. So here we go with the tree, and then we're going to go in with this other part. And again, this will be a this will be have to be completed in my studio, but I think you get the idea and you get the picture of how to do the big areas. Big areas, very important. That's done now. Let me just put a few more um, leaves in the front and we'll call it a day. And then I gotta go on my run. <laughs> Usually Sunday's my long run day, so um, I was gonna find a trail here up in Antioch, but I may go back and wait a little bit until it stops raining. Don't want to run in the, in the rain. Let's see what else we got. I'm looking at the picture now. And All right, I think I just looked at the picture from the, from the distance. Every once in a while I get back from it too and look at it from a distance. This background stuff back here, I'm gonna do a little bit more there just to get this area seems kind of empty so I'm not gonna make it brighter though I don't want to make it uh, more contrasty I just want to oh, now I've made it more contrasty <laughs> I just want to put a little bit more detail in this area here just to kind of give it a look of like what what's going on here is there a tree on I'll also make my car come out a little bit farther Forward in there again. And I will also again make things a little bit tighter. I'll put like um, white, and maybe I'll even do that live when I get back. And it could be part of this. I'll put it into there. <laughs> Get more branches, and then we're gonna call it quits. Cover this for the light. Oh, I forgot. I, I was gonna put some people in. Let me put some people in right now too. That's okay. Just to show you. So I want to put some people in here, and I will put them in as a almost like a. Just a mark. And then I will put the legs in on them. And I should give them umbrellas. And I will give them reflections also into the into the street. And umbrellas, make them red. I always like red umbrellas in a picture. That's really dark, so I hear a little bit of red umbrellas. And way in the distance there, walking away. And I'll put the red into the street. And I'll tighten them up probably later on. I'll tighten all this stuff up here a little bit because there's like a little table back here. and. Maybe just a little bit, not very much. I'm not going to go crazy with the detail. Just a little bit so it doesn't look all super, super wet. <laughs> and I get some more, a little bit harder edges in there too. So now these two cars are just driving away here next to me. It's like going to get louder anyways. So let me just show you what we got here. So here's what we got so far. And here's the picture, the way it looks. You can see how the dark's right here, the dark's over there, nice and dark, and then we got this part right here. And these are the dark trees. See how as it goes, comes forward, it gets really dark. And so pretty much I had gotten most of it, I think, enough to where I can stop now and uh, maybe finish a little bit more of the detail of like the benches and there's a little bit there. Or not. We'll see. We'll see when I get it dried and it's all dried up and because now it's still really wet and so it's still going to blend itself and it's going to get some harder edges in there so so actually um thanks again for watching guys um now i'm gonna go on my run hopefully when it stops raining
Let me see if there are any questions. Uh, I'll look at the questions if you guys got any questions. If it's the bottom or top, <laughs> that was the first. <laughs> I think the bottom here. What about?